Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to use Microsoft Excel um, and a high-low analysis to work out the cost function for uh, this particular company with their 12 months worth of pizza and overhead costs. Um, so the idea with this is we have a range of outputs and overhead costs associated with those. And these overhead costs are not only fixed, as you can see, they change around, um, but they're not purely variable either. So we need to come up with a way um, a way to sort of split up what this total cost function is into its fixed and variable components. Uh, so one way to do that is to use the high-low method and I'm just going to step through um, using the high-low method right here. Uh, so first of all we'll just put in, we're looking for the maximum and we're looking for maximum output. Just even that up a bit. We're looking for maximum output and tidy that up. We're looking for minimum output. We'll put along the top, we'll put output, we'll put overhead, and we'll leave it at that for the moment. So we could, I mean, given we've only got 12 months worth of data, we could just eyeball this and, and pick one out. But if we use Excel, we can actually use the max function and that will find in the selection, and I'm going to pick because of the merge, we can't do that. I'm going to pick the data and it will find the largest output in that particular sequence of data. And I'll roll it down and that still picks up the maximum, so we're, even though we're looking for the minimum because I haven't changed the function. So we change that over to min and we find the minimum function. Um, so it finds within this range the largest and the smallest. Um, now one comment what I've done here is and if you look up into the formula bar you'll see that there are dollar signs before the column and there are dollar signs before the row. What these do is to lock in or make it an absolute reference. So as we roll this down it doesn't change. If we didn't do that then you'd see some changes in terms of what it's picking up. What I'm then going to do is use a VLOOKUP function so it's VLOOKUP and what we're doing is the VLOOKUP function finds something and in this case we're looking for whatever's in this cell so it's going to find 2600 it's going to find it in the leftmost column of what I'm searching and it will return some sort of output. So where I'm searching is columns B and C and I'll lock them. And I'm looking not in the first row, sorry, first column, I'm looking in the second column. So put two, and I'll just put on zero so in case it can't find it. And what we find is it returns 10,100. And if we eyeball that, we can see 2,600 is 10,100. And all we have to do is copy this down. And in the minimum row, it's looking up 1,200. It will find 1,200 down here. And it will go across and find and return what it is in the second column. That's because I've asked it here to return what's in the second column. And so that gives us the output and the overhead cost. Now just in case, I'm going to do a check that there aren't more than one of these outputs. And the reason why I'm doing this is because a VLOOKUP will return the first. Um, so with this, I'm going to do count if. So a count if function, you select the range you want to look at which is the output range. And then you select what you're looking for, which is the 2600. And there's only one in there, so that's fine. And we roll it down and there's only one 1200. So that means these are what we're, these are what we're gonna be using. For a high-low analysis, what we then do is take the difference between the two. So 1400 
and the difference between these two gives you 3,350. I'll just draw that under there. And the variable cost per unit is just simply the overhead cost or the marginal overhead cost divided by the marginal number of units. And that gives us $2.39. So we now know that for each additional unit, um, the coefficient um, for the variable cost is $2.39. What we then need to figure out is what the total fixed cost is. Now to do this, we need to work out what the total variable cost is at each of these levels of production. So we put in total variable cost and total fixed cost. Total variable cost is the output multiplied by the variable cost per unit. And again, I'm going to put the dollar signs in to make sure that that doesn't move. And that returns us $6,221. We copy that down and for 1200 units, it gives us 2,871. We then take off the difference, or we find the difference between the overhead cost and the total variable cost, which is 3,878. We copy that down and it's the same. And that makes sense because that's fixed. So we've now found the variable cost per unit and the total fixed cost, which is what we were looking for. Now the cost function, the cost function is the total cost equals total fixed cost plus variable cost per unit times the quantity. So in this case, total cost equals 3879, so just round it up to the nearest dollar, plus $2.39 times the quantity. And what we then do is to work out various estimated costs, if you want to just have an idea and play around with it, is estimated total cost. So we'll come up with just, we'll make up various output levels. Now remember the output should be within the relevant range. So you can use an output between 1200 and 2600. Outside of that, we can't be certain that this function will hold. So, you know, I wouldn't be using an output of 10,000 because things may well change. Um, so in this case, just various different output levels. And what we do is that function is equal to the total fixed cost plus the variable cost per unit. Oh, actually, I'll change that. Total fixed cost, make it absolute, times the variable cost per unit, make it absolute so it doesn't change, multiplied by the number of units of output. That should be a plus. And we have a cost function based on the high-low analysis. And we can then use that to estimate um, various levels of production, um, the, the overhead cost of various levels of production. So for 1,500, 2,000, 2,500. And that's using high-low. Another thing I want to show you quickly is to use to how to get the cost function using a regression analysis without actually doing um, anything too fancy. So what we're doing here is selecting, so I just left click, select the output and the cost, insert a scatter graph, pick the top left one. And so that gives us a scatter plot. Now I'm just going to tidy it up a bit. You know, this is just because you know, I think this is not as well set out as it could be. Um, so I'm going to get rid of the series because we don't actually need this. So I'm going to delete, right click and delete that. Um, you can see that we're sort of adjusted up a little bit. So here are the data points. So there's all this space under here, which isn't really used and there's all this space over here, which isn't really used. So we're going to change that. So I'm going to right click on the horizontal axes. I'm going to format the axis. I'm going to change the minimum to fixed. I'm going to change it to a thousand. And so you can see where we're much better set out. 
along here, but we're still vertically not well set out. So 6,000 seems to be a reasonable cut point. So we'll right click on the axis, format axis, fixed 6,000. And that looks a bit better. Um, we can see we've got a relatively linear trend going along here. To, sh to add a trend line in, right click, add trend line. Now there's a couple of things and I just want to draw your attention to. Um, linear is because we just want um, a straight linear um, representation of the relationship. The other thing you should do is display the equation on chart and select that. And we close it. And what we see is the trend line has been added. And it's a pretty good representation. We also have the equation that we need. And if you can see that, y, so that, and that'll be total cost, is we have the slope coefficient first, which is 2.09. You know, a little bit under the 2.39, but not too dissimilar plus 3,998 as the intercept, which again is pretty close to what we had here. So if we wanted to write this in, we get a total cost equals 3,998, I'm just going to change the order around, plus 2.0919 times quantity. And so this is the cost function generated through the regression through the regression analysis. I know we haven't done the proper regression analysis and kind of got all the coefficients and and all the various output from it, but it's a really quick and dirty way to get that result. That's about it. So that's using Microsoft Excel, using maximum and minimum functions, using the VLOOKUP and using a scatter plot to come up with uh, the high-low cost function and the regression analysis cost function.